So you want your videos to look more cinematic. You want your shots to look more interesting, more professional, higher quality. Well, all that sounds nice, but how do you make it happen? Well, don't worry, because I got you. In this video, I'm going to be sharing my top cinematography tips that you can use ASAP. And by the way, you can get all of the tips in this video in a convenient mobile cheat sheet that you can download in the resources below. Tip number one is dominant focus. Dominant focus means that there is one area of your shot that clearly dominates all of the attention of the viewer. The last thing you want is for somebody to look at your shot and say, what is this? What am I supposed to be looking at? So like in these shots, I don't know what's important because there's no dominant focus. So every time before you press record, you better know what your dominant focus is and then you better frame your shot in a way that it's going to be the star. All right, so we're filming a shot here. We've decided that we want this plant in the middle of the table to be our dominant focus. I could frame the shot like this, but I got a lot of distractions in the background. I've got this cardboard box and this chair, and it's just looking kind of messy. All right, so I like this light in the background. It's kind of creating this halo effect around my plant, making the plant the star, which is what we want. So now that I like the spot, I am going to move forward, backward, up, down, and see if I can make that light even more of an accent for the plant. So I'm gonna see if I can get that plant to be centered in that window and, and see what that looks like. All right, that's almost there, but I want the top of the plant inside the window. There we go. All right, we've got our plant right in the middle of the window. I'm loving the way this looks, but we can still refine a little bit more. I don't like the way these papers are on the bottom edge, for example. So we're gonna zoom in and get them out of the way. We still got these salt and pepper shakers on the table that look like this blurry blob behind the plant bottle. So I wanna get them out so they're not distracting. I could also move those coasters. And there is our finished shot. Everything that's in the frame is there for a reason and it's there to make our plant look like the star because it's the dominant focus. Tip number two is depth. So when a shot has depth, it has all of these layers from front to back with one of those layers being in focus and the rest of them being blurry. So depth makes shots look 3D, it makes them look full of life, and it makes your dominant focus stand out. So here are some examples of shots with really great depth. You can see that the subject is in focus while the foreground and the background are not. So to add depth to your shots, you wanna control what's in focus in them. And one of the best ways to do that is to adjust the aperture. So aperture is a setting with an F followed by a number. And the lower the aperture, the less stuff will be in focus in your shot. On the flip side, the higher the F number, the more stuff will be in focus in your shot. And so everything just starts to look flat at a certain point. And you can see how much more depth that shot on the left at the low aperture of F2.8 has than the shot on the right at a high aperture of F22. So remember that an aperture that's higher means more stuff will be in focus in your shot, that makes the shot look flat, and an aperture that's lower means less stuff will be in focus in your shot, and that adds depth. Another way you can add depth to your shots is by controlling the distance between your subject and the background and the foreground. So if I put Miles right up against this wall so that there's very little distance between him and the background, then both he and the background will be in focus. But the farther I move him away from the wall, the blurrier the wall gets, and that creates depth and makes him pop against the background. So just remember that more distance equals more depth. More distance, more depth. Yeah? Yeah. You can also use the foreground to create depth in your shots by having something blurry that's close to the lens and then having your subject in focus behind that. So if I'm filming Miles and I want my shot to look more interesting, I can move my camera behind some foreground object to create depth in the shot. And if I can't find a foreground object naturally, then I'm just gonna create one by holding something up to the lens. Yes, yes, that looks so cute. So you have lots of ways to control the foreground and the background and add depth to your shots. Tip number three is variety. So obviously you want to add variety to the composition of your shots and you can do that in a couple of ways. The first way is to change the size of your subject within the frame. So you wanna film a mix of extreme wide shots, wide shots, medium shots, medium close-ups, close-up or tight shots, and extreme close-ups. I generally use wide shots when I'm first establishing a scene, and then I use close-up or tight shots as the scene unfolds to show details like hands working or to emphasize emotions on the subject's face. Besides changing the size of the subject within the frame, the other way you can add variety to your shots is to change the angle of your camera. Low angle shots make subjects look big and strong and intimidating, so you'll often see them used in rap videos a lot or to make villains look scary, for example. 
However, keep in mind that low angle shots are not the most flattering shots, so I generally try to avoid them if I'm filming faces or if I'm filming interviews. High angle shots make your subject look small and weak, or they can show your subject in the context of a bigger scene. And don't be scared to climb on a chair or hold a monopod or a tripod above your head to get those high angle shots. High angle shots are also great for overhead or flat lay shots that can show work on a surface, for example. And a lot of tripods have a center column that you can pull out and fold down to get the shot. But you might want to add a weight to your tripod so that it doesn't tip over when you're doing this. If you want to capture an extreme high angle or a bird's eye shot, obviously you can use a drone for that. And finally, eye level shots give viewers a straightforward and honest feeling. They're really flattering and so they're great for interviews. Besides changing the angle of your camera up or down, don't forget to change the angle around the perimeter of your subject. So you can film your subject from the front, from the side, or from the back. So remember to add variety to your shots by changing the size of your subject within the frame or by changing the angle of your camera. And I've got all of the shot types that I just mentioned listed in the cheat sheet, which is really convenient because you can just glance down when you're filming and make sure that you've got your bases covered. My next tip is the five shot rule. And this is a filmmaking rule that says that whenever you are filming an important action, you want to take at least five different shots of it. So here's a scene we filmed of someone working at Google, and you'll see that we got at least five different shots of the same scene to make it more exciting. So remember that anytime you're filming an important action, record at least five different shots of it. The next rule is the 10 second rule. And the 10 second rule says that you should record every single one of your shots for at least 10 seconds. So you should press record and let your camera roll for at least 10 seconds before stopping your recording. The reason you want to record each shot for at least 10 seconds is because you might shake the camera a little bit during the first few seconds you record, or maybe you adjust the focus or the exposure during those first few seconds, or maybe the perfect expression doesn't come on your subject's face until like the seventh second that you're recording. And so if you hold each shot for at least 10 seconds, you're going to ensure that you get a solid take every time. And I know it feels really weird at first, like 10 seconds feels really slow, but I promise if you get in the habit of this, it's gonna make a huge difference when you go to edit your footage. Tip number six is movement. So movement is what sets video apart from every other medium in the world, and there are a few ways that you can add it to your shot. And the first way and the easiest way is just to have your subject move. That is true whether your subject is a person, a plant, a hand, whatever. So look at these shots from American Idol. You can see that the camera is barely moving here, but it's the subjects that are moving, and that's what makes things exciting. And that is something that a lot of beginning filmmakers take for granted. They make the mistake of thinking that they need to move their camera for every single shot they take. That can not only make your viewers feel motion sick, but it leaves a lot more room for error because shots with camera movement are so much harder to execute. However, it is getting easier and easier to get great shots with camera movement as technology advances, which brings me to the next way that you can add movement to your shots, which is by moving your camera. You can use a tripod for up and down tilt shots, side to side pan shots, or some combination of both to follow your subject's movement. And I would definitely recommend using a tripod with a fluid head so that you can get smooth movements that are not jerky. And I often use the trick of a rubber band on my pan handle for even smoother tripod shots. Besides a tripod, another popular tool for camera movement is a gimbal. And this is a device with these pivoting axes that stabilize your camera much better than your human hands when you are moving it. This lets you glide your camera through a scene and it gives your shots that magical Hollywood feeling. I especially like to use gimbal shots when I'm filming an establishing shot of an environment or some other scene that doesn't have a lot of subject movement. And I also use gimbal shots a lot to follow my subjects when they're walking to make viewers feel like they're coming along for the journey. And even though the gimbal does a lot of work to keep your camera steady, I still recommend always holding the gimbal with two hands to keep it as stable as possible and always bending your knees when you're walking with it to avoid adding that nasty bounce to your shots. Whether you're using a tripod or some other stabilizing device, the key to camera movement is to be intentional and to keep your movements simple. So you only want to move your camera when it adds to the story that you're telling. And when you do, you want to pick one movement and execute it really well instead of aimlessly moving your camera around. Finally, the last way to add movement to your shots is to move the zoom of your camera in or out while you're recording, but I would not recommend doing this. Even though adjusting the zoom while you're recording can help draw the viewer's attention into the subject, if you do it all the time, it can be hella distracting and just look amateurish. Bottom line is, I would recommend adding movement to your shots 
first by having your subjects move because that is the easiest to execute, and then by moving your camera in simple, intentional movements that add to your story. And if you use movement in these ways, then I promise you, your shots are gonna look so much more cinematic. Tip number seven is to think in sequences. Whenever you're filming a scene, you want to think of your shots in a sequence. So you wanna think, what order are my shots gonna play in, and how are those shots going to create a beginning, middle, and end? So I can think of my shots in a sequence, even when I'm filming something as simple as my partner Miles here writing a card at this table. So first, I'm gonna ask myself, what shots am I going to take to introduce the viewer to this scene? So instead of starting with a shot where Miles is already sitting at the table, I could show him walking up to the table and sitting down. I could show his hand grabbing a card and then grabbing a pen. And then a shot of him starting to write his card. A shot while he's in the middle of his note. And then him signing the card. And then I'm gonna ask myself, what shots am I gonna take to wrap this scene up? So I could show Miles putting his card in an envelope, sealing it, and then walking away from the table. So whenever you're filming the action in a scene, remember to think in sequences and be really intentional about capturing shots that are going to represent your beginning, middle, and end. Tip number eight is matched action. So matched action is when you have two different shots of the same scene, but the timing between them matches up. Here's an example of matched action. The wide shot starts the action and then the close up finishes it without any interruption. Now obviously the easiest way to capture matched action is to have different cameras recording the same scene at the same time. But if you're a one woman band, let's say, it can be difficult to have a bunch of different cameras in different spots all at the same time, but you can still achieve matched action. You just need to direct your subject to do the same movement over and over and then you're gonna film it in different ways every time. So I'm gonna have you stand up and then you're gonna walk up to the table, sit down, and we'll do that like three times. But if you do this, remember to keep continuity in mind between your different shots. So if I film Miles sitting down and in this first shot his water glass is full, then it's not gonna look right if his water glass is only up to here in the second shot. But if you forget this, then don't beat yourself up. Even Hollywood movies have continuity errors in them. Like in the scene from Spider-Man where he grabs the lamp, smashes it against the wall, but in the next shot, there's the lamp perfectly intact on the bookshelf. All right, let's recap. Have a dominant focus and eliminate any distractions in your frame. Add depth to your shots by using an aperture with a low F number and controlling your foreground and background. Add variety to your compositions by changing the size of the subject within the frame and the angle of your camera. Use the five shot rule to take a minimum of five different shots whenever you're filming an important action. Use the 10 second rule and record every shot for at least 10 seconds to ensure a solid take. Add movement to your shots for your subjects, your camera, or both. Think in sequences so that you have shots for the beginning, middle, and end of your scene. And use matched action shots to film a scene in different ways without breaking continuity. Try these tips the next time you're filming and I promise you they are going to up your filmmaking game and make your shots look so much more cinematic. Also, don't forget that you can get all the tips from this lesson in a convenient little mobile cheat sheet that you can download in the resources below. All right, y'all, that's it for this lesson. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.